so yeah, nothing actually happened between Boma and I. Yeah. We remained friends from the first week. Um, no, definitely not. And that's why, and again, I didn't say I daddy zoned him. I just said I saw him like the daddy of the house, you know. So I see why people say, oh, you daddy zoned him. And honestly, he's the daddy of the house. He's the one everybody goes to when they have an issue. You know, he's the one that's making sure everybody's well fed. He's just that person in the house. So that's why he's the word daddy. You see, that Nini calls him daddy, you know. There's a reason why. And everybody's just that man for, you know, everybody goes to, oh, I have this problem, I want this, I'm hungry, this, this, this. And he loves doing that, and that's who he is. He's so caring. Um, so when I go into the house, that was the vibe I got from him. I saw how he was and how he is with everybody. In fact, he always reminded me how I'm the first person he fed. Like he gave um, he gave food to that day. I think they had cooked for the ladies before we came in. Um, and I remember when I after the show, I was like, I'm hungry. So he was like, Come, come, come. So he served me food. So I was the first person he served. Um, after that, I saw him serve everybody. So I started getting all that. Um, in fact, I even gave him a gift, a shirt. I think a few days after, because I saw how he was like cooking and caring for everybody so I wanted to appreciate him for that and I gave him a gift as well um so yeah that's just how I saw him in fact we used to joke about how he had like several wives you know and we used to joke about it oh this one is your wife this one is your lolo and at the time they even joked about oh I'm the side chick so we just, just all used to play like that so I never saw him in any romantic way I never saw him in any romantic way um, we were all just always playing and joking and he was such an amazing guy so yeah I didn't get any vibe I never felt like he looked at me in any way that made me feel like Oh, this guy is looking at me this way. Do you get what I mean? I didn't get that vibe. You know, there's with Boma, I got it from the first day. He was very, I mean, he was the first person to help me with my suitcase. You know, he was there. So I could, of course, I could tell this guy likes me. But with, um, why? Because he was a certain way with all the girls. I didn't feel any difference in our own, uh, the way we were re relating. So when he told me, I was like, wait, what? You know, I was shocked. But I mean, he's a man. I didn't want him to feel bad about, you know, telling me he liked me, even though he wasn't showing it. And I know people are different. Not everybody's able to express themselves like, you know, the way you'd expect or whatever. So I understood that and I took it and I told him like, okay, cool. I never really saw you like that. I appreciate you telling me, um, but let's see how it goes, you know. Uh, but he told me after Michael had come into the picture already. So, of course, my mind was already somewhere else as well. So it wasn't easy for me to just switch. Um, honestly, I think that's who White Money is. Um, I don't know him out of the house. I never met him before. But I don't think it's easy to put on such a, an act from, for this long. If at all it's a strategy, I think he's using himself as a strategy. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, when people ask me what's a strategy, I say I was being myself. And if that's what you consider a strategy, that's fine. You know, so if, if that's what we want to call strategy, that's who he is. I don't think he's pretending anyway. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I think he's genuinely an amazing person, just a caring person. and wants to see everybody happy. I think that's who he is. Um, honestly, I don't think I switched my my look. I went in there with my hair. I don't know if you have relaxed there, you know. When you have your hair relaxed, you want to rock your hair while it's relaxed, you know, you want to rock it out there, and that's how I am out of the house. So I, my, my hair was freshly done, and I wanted to rock my natural hair. I love my natural hair the way it is, thank you. Um, so I was just enjoying my hair, really, you know. And by the time Michael came, my hair was already getting to a point where I wanted to be covering. I wanted to change up my look every now and then. We had Darling as well, um, you know, giving us tasks and making sure that we were wearing their hair as well. So yeah, I had to be changing up my looks a lot. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. When you're attracted to a guy, you want to make sure you're 100 all the time. But I do think I was 100, you know, at most of the time, even outside of the house. But yes, with Michael, um, yeah, I mean, I was myself. I wouldn't say I was anything changed up. I was still, it's still the clothes I carried into the Big Brother house. So it's not like I went outside to go and buy clothes to say, oh, for Michael, you know, it's still my clothes I was wearing that I plan to wear in the house anyways. Um, but I understand why people felt like, you know, yeah, he definitely sparked up something um, in me. And um, he definitely made me look forward to like going to the gym and stuff like that. Because when you're in the gym, you know, I hardly work out now. I'll just be there looking at some, you know, nice looking men. He was one of those nice looking men I like to look at in the gym. So yeah, of course, all those things made me feel, you know, wow, well, like I look forward to waking up in the morning and stuff like that. So I can understand why people feel like I came out of my, so yeah, and, and it's, it's probably true to be very honest. And that's completely human, you know. Um, yeah, he was, Michael's an exciting person. 
from the moment he walked into the house, I could tell that from his vibe, and that's why I drew very, you know, I was close to him as well. And I knew it was mutual. From the moment he walked into the house and he introduced himself, um, aside from his energy, he's very, very, he's a very intellectual person as well. Um, I could tell that from just his first um, speech that he made in the house. So that drew me to him for sure. And of course, he's a good-looking chocolate guy. So. I mean, that too. So it was a bunch of everything. And like I said, because it was mutual, it made me more comfortable to even like, you know, open up to it, yeah. Um, I think, I don't, I don't think we've had that much of a conversation about my, my you know, my life in that, that, that part of my life. We did touch on it. And I wasn't trying to have that conversation in the house, to be very honest, but um, everybody in the house, even people that I wasn't close to knew or is aware of how seriously I take my son and how involved in my life he is and vice versa, yeah. So everybody's pretty much aware of that. So because Michael and I were close and he seemed like he was pushing towards something, I felt the need to bring some of those things up for him to understand, okay, I'm not just avoiding you because I want to avoid you or I'm not just avoid, sorry, I'm, I'm not just avoiding entering a serious relationship in this house because I'm trying to, I need you to come out and see what, like my whole entire life and decide for yourself if something you can handle. Um, I've always said, um, I know I'm a single mom, I have a child. Not every man is going to be comfortable dealing with that, and that's totally fine. The same way, not every woman is comfortable dealing with men that have children, right? Everybody has their preference. So I don't like to push anything on anybody. So I, I'm very open with whom, my life. And then you can tell me if you can handle it or not, but I'm not going to be dipping that being with we'll start, and then next thing is a problem, and then I'm not going to be doing that at this point in my life. So that's why I like to put it out there in the beginning so everybody knows what they're doing with, uh, dealing with. Um, so yeah. We, we touched on it, but we didn't, I wouldn't say we've had that conversation, you know, in depth. Um, so I can't really speak on that, to be honest, because I can't, we haven't had that conversation. I don't put any words in his mouth until I've actually had that conversation with him. But it does play a, a role, it's definitely a factor, I mean, in whatever decisions I make, um, not just with Michael, but with whoever I plan to spend the rest of my life with or date or whatever, it's definitely going to play a role. Okay, so with Maria, I think um, I went into, so when I go into the house, like I said, um, after I observed Maria, like I observed everybody else, you know when you get into a space, you want to observe people that are around you to know how to, you know, this type of person, and okay, I can talk to you now, and just, you just observe. So with Maria, I thought she was a beautiful woman, um, you know, she's very confident, she's very bold, and she says her mind, without thinking, she says her mind instantly. And she was just, so I noticed it, and I was like, let me just, you know, when I maintain my distance from this babe, she seems like someone that I probably have like an altercation with and I'm not trying to do that, you know, so I'd rather just stay out of her way and everything. So I started purposely avoiding her to the point that I guess she noticed. I didn't even know she noticed it. Um, there was a time we had the conversation and I told her, I was like, ah, babe, me, I did avoid you. I don't want, because I feel like me, you're going to fight. We laughed about it and, you know, um, so yeah, I think the week that we had that argument, um, she... What even happened? I just had it in my like I felt it. I just felt it coming somehow. I felt it coming. I remember I mentioned it to one of the housemates and even her. I was like, look, I feel like me and you are probably going to have, you know, an argument very soon or something. We still laughed about it. On this day that thing happened, it was actually an argument between Maria and Angel. Um, I can't speak on why, why they were having an argument because I don't know and I was in the situation. But I think it was a case of I was trying to calm my um, Angel down. And I'm just the kind of person honestly in serious situations I laugh. That's just, when I'm under pressure, I laugh. It's just, that's just, that's just how I am. So I remember I was laughing, they were arguing back and forth, calling each other names. Trust me, when you're in the house and you see people, you will laugh. It's funny. They see all kinds of things. You do get, you see all kinds of things when you're angry. So it's funny. So I was laughing, I understand, because there was already kind of tension between me and Maria. Um, you know, considering I felt like, oh, we're going to argue and she felt like I was avoiding her. She felt like I was coming at her by laughing or I was ganging up against her, which I understood. But at the time I was like, ah. Why are you coming at me? Because she just started coming at me while she was arguing with, with um, Angel. So I was like, ah, wait a second, what brought me into this one? So obviously I was upset and I started, like, I replied her. Um, I think I stepped away from the place and I went outside and she followed me and she was going on and on and on and on and on. So I didn't know, I can't remember what she said that made, triggered me and made me now like just go all the way off as well. So I think it was just a lot of back and forth. I even forgot about it, Chad, to be honest. Um, anyway, that night, she did come to me for, uh, for a talk and I respect that so much because she was a bigger person. I probably wouldn't have done that. Um, and she did. And we had a conversation. I told her why I felt the way I felt. She did the same. And we understand we understood each other and kind of agreed to understand each other's understand each other's personalities, you know. 
And since then, honestly, I had a lot of respect for her for coming to me to have that conversation. And I think I just, the way I saw her, just, you know, she just changed in that moment. And she's still the same person. She remains the same person in the house. But I think she was a bit more conscious about how I felt about things she would say to me. And so we were, I think it was just mutual respect, really, that, you know, so we related based on that mutual respect. That was how we just moved, moved on. Eventually, I spoke to Angela about it, and the reason why was because in the beginning, I honestly felt like my issue was with Michael, and that's why I spoke to Michael about it instantly after it happened. Um, with Maria, it was a thing where, now, I don't know if other housemates would say, but they did say to me, I mean, they noticed what was going on. I'm not saying anything was going on, but they noticed and they would bring it to my attention and tell me, oh, did you notice this was happening? This was happening. So I guess me and Maria kind of bonded on things she also observed. Maybe she was not right or she was wrong or she was whatever. She observed it and she would, ah, what's this happening? And I would tell her, yeah, this, I've noticed it. This is how it's going on. And I feel like she's doing this, she's doing this, she's doing this. So we, we related on that level based on, she knew, what, she understood what I was saying and where I was coming from because she could see certain things so that made, made me feel the way I felt. So I was very comfortable talking to her about it and I felt like she really did understand it as well. Um, so that's how, why me and her related on that level. Of course, when the thing happened with me and Angel, I wasn't as close to Angel again. I'm a human being. There's no way you have, you feel some type of way about something someone has done to you and you still be that close. I mean, it's just normal. So that was why obviously me and Angel went on. There was a distance between us that during that time. Um, and um, yeah, after that, we, I think obviously I had my conversations with Michael and um, I moved on from that. And then I also had a conversation with Angel to let her understand why there was a distance between the two of us. I made her understand that. Um, pretty much everything I felt, I told her. Um, I told her why I felt where I felt, why I was upset. And honestly, it was more to do with the fact that I felt like, you know, we're friends, you know, I like this guy, you know, this guy likes me, we're talking. I wouldn't expect you to be doing certain things with him considering you're my friend. I'm not saying don't talk, don't relate, but it looked like something else to me because you had told me you liked him. So of course I was feeling, yeah, she had told me when he came in me and we told each other, I was like, ah, I like him. She's like, yeah, she likes him too. It's a type, you know, it's a type in some way, this, this, this. So now I know that it's an attraction, right? Okay, now me and him are talking and it looks like, you, you know, you're rubbing his head. Of course, to me, he's looking the wrong way. I mean, human being, you're my friend. For someone else I was not close to, I'd be like, it's cool. They don't know, they don't understand, but we know. So that's why I was more disappointed in Angel about that situation. And that's why I was hurt. If I wasn't bothered, if I wasn't hurt by that, I would have not sent and I would have not been, you know, like, oh, stay away from me. I was hurt. I'm a human being. And yes, I had a conversation with people about it excuse me, because it bothered me. Um, so yeah, that was that. But after I had a conversation with her, we didn't, I don't think it was a lot of back and forth between me and her, but I let her know how I felt. And honestly, I moved on from, from that. Yeah, I never said, I never said she stole my shoes. Now, with that situation, again, I don't know what the camera shows, right? Um, again, I'm a human being and I'm, I'm entitled to feel the way I feel. If someone does something to me that looks this way, I'm sorry I'm going to feel that way and I'm going to say my mind at the end of the day. Um, I don't know what the camera showed, but with this uh, whole shoe situation, um, it was a case of, I had my white sneakers. Um, I usually put it in the shoe rack beside my locker and this part on this particular day i don't know if the camera showed it i had gone to the locker to get my shoes and i didn't know it wasn't there anymore and i looked back and i noticed tiger was in front of her locker and um, angel was there so, so there were just two of them in the changing room at the time and i normally when someone takes your thing the first thing everybody says is like who took my thing now so i was like who took my sneakers i don't understand i put my sneakers here hey, um tiger did you take my sneakers she was like no she didn't take it i turned to um, angel angel did you take my sneakers she said no I looked down and I see a pair of white sneakers there. But because she had said no, I felt, okay, that's probably her sneakers. And I walked away and I left it. Um, so I didn't think much of it. But later when I was in locker, I noticed the sneakers were not there again, but she wasn't wearing it either. So that made me feel, hmm, that's probably my sneakers. But I kept quiet about it. I think I told Boma also. No, I didn't even told anybody at the time. I don't remember. But, um, so, but I already felt like that's probably my sneakers. Maybe she didn't feel like she wanted to tell me at the time. Maybe she felt under pressure or whatever. I don't know. I was like, cool, I'll ask her at a later time. So it was not until after we had that conversation on dining about the whole Michael situation that I now asked her, like, D -d by the way, did you take my sneakers? And she yeah. said, she was like, oh yeah, yeah, she did. And I was like, I even laughed. I was like, eh, I knew you were the one that took the sneakers. And I was like, okay, I'll get it back, you know. So I let it go. The next day or so, I don't know, I went to meet her and I was like, I think she was in the garden. I was like, how far? where are the sneakers and she's like she can't find it so 
in my head, that looked very, like I didn't understand what she was trying to do in that moment. First of all, I asked you the first time, you said no. I asked you again, you said yes, you give me back. I asked you again, you said you can't find it. To me, I'm like, you took something of mine without asking me. The least you could do is just give me back. I shouldn't even have to ask you again. Do you understand? So I felt upset that, you know, I had to come and ask you. And then now I'm asking you and tell me you can't find it. So nonchalantly. Do you understand? I mean, we're in this house together. I don't know where you would have possibly kept it that you can't remember. So of course I was like, ah, what's going on? So that now made me even feel worse about the situation. So I was like, that's my only white sneakers. I want my sneakers. She's like, okay, she will look for it. Then she goes about her day. I knew we had a task that evening. I needed the sneakers for. So I still went back to her again later to ask her, how far have you found it? She now just nonchalantly says, oh, it's somewhere. It's so I can't remember what she said. It's in the locker room. I should go and get it. I still went to, if it was someone else, trust me, they would have gone off because at this point, come on now. If it was her, she would have gone off, to be very honest. So I still patiently went to the locker room to check whether and I did not find it. So I went back to her again. I'm like, okay, babe, you have to give me the sneakers because at this point I can't find it. Like, come on now. So she now drags herself and she goes to the locker room and she went behind it. I can't remember what she but she went to one corner shot and brought it out. I don't know if she showed that part when she where she brought out the sneaker yes, from. So. She, where she took it from, I couldn't have been able to see it. I'm hoping that they can show this sneaker and come back to explain. It was on the other side of the, I don't know how to explain because you're not in the house, but I couldn't have looked and found it and it wasn't on, even on my side of the locker room or her side. So I couldn't have even guessed that oh, it's there and it was behind something. Do you get what I mean? She was the only one that could know that it was there. So she, anyway, she carries it and then puts it on some, drops it on something for me to pick up. No, I like carry it. So as I was now walking away, I was like, oh, like, okay, this thing has been dragging. So I actually called, I was like, come on, now you're supposed to at least apologize. You know, like at this point, I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was your sneaker or something like that. I can't remember what she said. So I was just like, at this point, like I had to even ask for an apology. Come on now. The next day, someone took her chicken. I don't know if, I don't know if this, you guys saw, like someone took her chicken and she cursed the person, you know, like she cursed it. And it's fine. If it was me, I'll be upset too. But I'm just saying, look at the reverse. Like someone took something of hers without asking her and she was that upset. So why do I not have a right to be upset that she took my thing? I was patient enough to wait for it, but I felt like she was pushing it. I'm human. And again, this is someone that I had considered my friend. So I was just feeling, why is she doing this? She's trying to... Right. Yeah, and I understood that. That was why I asked her. That's why when I asked her the second time, um, the second time she took it, I was laughing about it, and I even laughed about it. I was like, "Hey, I, I knew you had one that took." We had just had a conversation, and in my mind, we had just settled. So I felt like it was the perfect time to ask her and laugh about it. So I wasn't expecting that. Oh, I can't find it again, and all that to now come up. So of course, it now took me back again to make me wonder, like, uh, uh, what's going on? Like, uh, uh, Angel, like. This she could even do is apologize and then we can move on. But the way she handled it, definitely I was upset about it. And I definitely felt like, you know, she was trying to upset me. It just, I, I wouldn't have done that to her, to be very honest. So I didn't feel, I felt very disappointed in that moment. Yeah, but I mean, after time went on and I, I, I let it go. But I'm not going to lie, I was upset about it. I was definitely upset about it. I'm human. I don't see why anybody else would be. If you take the angel's thing, trust me, the whole house will know. Do you understand? You will, she will, she will announce it. So I felt like you know she shouldn't have done that to me, to be honest. So yeah, I was upset. But honestly, um, that happened a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago. It's been a while. Um, since then, we've been fine. Um, again, I can't speak for her, but we've been cool. We've been cordial, to be very honest. And life has gone on. I have wish her nothing but the best. And yeah, moved on from that. Um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely. I mean, the main, obviously, the Big Brother platform, as everybody knows, is a huge platform. It's like a catapult, you know, for anybody that is trying to get somewhere, just trying to put their brand out there, put themselves out there. People even go there to just learn and evolve and grow. And for me, I go a bit of almost everything, to be honest. I grew in a lot, emotionally, mentally, um, and um, I was able to learn new things, new skills. And aside from that, you know, obviously, with the platform that I have now, you know, there's nothing that I feel like I can achieve, you know, as long as I put my mind to it and I work towards it. So, yeah, it was everything that I imagined and, and more. People have very different reasons for wanting to go on a show like that. Um, Big Brother Ninja is not just, it's not a movie, you know. It's more than a reality um, um, show. It's a social experiment. That's why they bring a variety of people into the house to cohabitate and coexist. And that's why there's so much, so many things that happen. There's emotional stuff, there's friendly stuff, there's dirty stuff, there's sexy stuff, because we're all human beings in that space. And that's the point of it, it's a social experiment. And that's why I said there's so many things people take out of it too. We grow, we live, we learn. 
we're put on this on a pedestal to do, do whatever it is that we want to do so everybody goes there for very different reasons you know yes i didn't necessarily go there for the money but i would love to have the money <laughs> I'm not where I want to be yet. Nobody can set my goals for me. Nobody can tell me how much I have in my bank account. Nobody can tell me how much I should have in my bank account or I, what I want for myself. You know, I know what I want for myself and I went there because I wanted it. So again, there's people from all kinds of backgrounds in the house and there's a reason why they selected us in that house. Do you understand what I mean? It's not just about the money. It's, there's a lot more that you get from being in the house. If it was about 90 million, we'll not be having tax where people win 200K, 100K, 500K. You know, every week we have all those opportunities, you know. 1.3, I think. Oh, that's that's cool. 1.3 point something. No, that's cool money. Oh, girl, I have to work for that too. You're going to have to go into the world house and work for your own. <laughs> but yeah, um, people go in there for many different reasons. But yeah, I did go there for the money. So are you kidding me? That go to see the hustle. Are you kidding me? So yeah, I, I chose that because I wanted. I, who would have passed on that opportunity? I had the chance, not just for the money. You know, just like I said, there's so much that I took out of that experience. That I'm grateful for, and that's why I'm not one bit hot or upset that i did not get to the final or that i did not win the 90 million you know there's so much that i've already gotten out of the show hmm. patience yeah definitely patience um on every level emotionally spiritually um romantically career wise patience for sure yeah some a lot of patience and i use that word because it covers a lot of things to be honest um it covers strength it's giving me a lot of strength um i thought i had strength but i went to be with us and i now i know i even have more strength um that's personal for me but yeah the biggest thing i've, I've taken out of this is patience to be honest my name is jackie loreno bant is jackie the name or jackie Jackie, it's just Jackie. Really? Yes, I know. When I was second, it's really confused a lot, but I mean, on my birth certificate, it's just Jackie. So my mom did tell me I was named just Jackie. It wasn't Jacqueline. But I know Jackie is really short for, for Jacqueline. So people just assume that it's Jacqueline, but it's not Jacqueline. It's just Jackie. So before the house, um, I've had my, obviously, after I graduated from school and I moved back to Nigeria, I started my fashion business, which I was running for several years. Um, no, I'm not wearing. Um, no, I'm not wearing my my, my stuff. But um, so I did fashion for a while. I had an online fashion store, and then I also had my fashion boutique in Abuja. So I've been doing fashion for a while, and then I decided to go into interior designing. Um, I've been doing that, but not on a large scale. So I've been doing that on small scales, and I, I hadn't been like promoting it. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to be on the platform. Um, I found a lot of fashion in interior design and also event planning. I got my certification as well, so I'm certified. Um, so I was doing all of that, but because people knew me for so many years doing fashion, people didn't really know, you know, Jackie's also an interior designer, Jackie's also a, fa um, a wedding planner as well. So I wanted to really be able to push that and be, because I want to obviously expand and do that on a larger scale. So, but yeah, that's what I was doing before now. Yeah, I tried my best to. The only way I could do it really in that situation. I mean, if you notice with fashion tax, I don't think there's any fashion tax that I did not that I did not win. You know, I won like I think two or three. I won three fashion tasks, um, fashion related tasks. We didn't have that many, but I won almost all the fashion related tasks in the house. Um, because obviously that's something that I have a lot of knowledge in and passion for. Um, I know in the house I did even tell people that I felt like I was a bit disadvantaged sometimes because I didn't feel like I had opportunities, you know, with the tasks and you know, we had a lot of tasks, which, I, which I'm grateful for because now I have a bit more interest in acting. I never thought I would have been an actor or anything. I'm not saying I want to be an actor, but you know, just things like that. Big Brother opens your mind to new opportunities and new things that you didn't even know you had in you. So anyway. Um, I remember I always used to say, Big Brother, I'm really hoping that I will get, get a task code that I can, you know, show my own skills in interior designing or wedding, something. I just used to say that maybe it would have come up. I always say I left, but maybe it would have come up. But yeah, I didn't have So the only way I could do it was talk about all the housemates knew about it because I would talk about it and I would tell them, your wedding, you know, I'm going to plan it. You know, I'll talk about some of the jobs I've worked on before. Um, housemates also noticed in the way I handle my stuff um, that, you know, this is what she does. So yeah, I did it to the best of my ability, which was by talking. I wasn't going to be going around the house screaming, interior designer, interior designer, do you understand? Um, I did speak on it. Again, I don't know what the camera picks up at which time, but I did mention it. And to me, that was the only way I could have done it. 
spoken. We've spoken. We've spoken. And we've spoken and we've seen very briefly as well. But we haven't had time with all this going on. So we haven't had time yet. But we haven't really spoken at length just yet. Because I, have, I haven't been free, obviously. Um, but we will. Um, I do like Michael. Um, I can say that we definitely have an amazing friendship. Uh, we care about each other a lot. Uh, we definitely have feelings for each other. Um, about whether or not I would date him. Um, the point of not dating him in the house because I wanted to come out and see the possibilities. Um, but like I always say, I'm open to whatever possibilities. If we're going to date or remain friends, like like you asked, we haven't had that opportunity to have these conversations and get to know each other on a deeper level just yet, but we will. But whichever way it goes, I do know that and I would love to have Michael in my life for sure. I should be doing my top five. Okay, so I would say Liquor Rose, White Money, Sasuke, Cross, and Angel. Hey guys, it's your girl Jackie B, aka Landed. I just finished my interview with NetNG, guys. I hope you've watched it. If you haven't, go and watch it and follow them at NetNG. See you.